So hi everyone, thanks a lot for coming to this, uh, this talk about the data input process. Uh, my name is Navino Evans, or, or Nav. I actually call myself Navino, but everyone else calls me Navino. Uh, and generally Nav is much easier because it's an unusual name. Um, so basically I'm, uh, yeah, I'm part of this project. I'm the co-founder of Fishopedia, but now I'm sort of talking of, with my sort of Wikidata hat on uh, and the work that we've been doing on the data import process, which has mostly been part of our um, uh, uh, you know, our project with UNESCO. Um, John Cummings is the Wikimedian in residence at UNESCO, and um, he basically, you know, realized he was just constantly getting access to data that he, he didn't know how to deal with. Uh, so he brought me into the project last year, and then this year we've expanded it a bit more, and that's why we've got Sean McBurney and uh, Anna on board as well. Um, so um, ba basically, the, um, this is supposed to just be a little look at what we did to try and make things easier. Uh, to track what was going on and to sort of try and document because the one universal point was that everyone was really confused about data reporting. Everyone did it in different ways, everyone worked independently, no one really knew what everyone else was doing and quite often you'd find you were halfway through something and someone else is already doing it and just, just waiting to play, press click or whatever on their quick statements import and uh, and so a little, a little lack of, of centralization. So I'm just kind of, kind of talk you through what we've done and explain sort of what's kind of okay about it and all of the many shortcomings and the things that we have to sort out in the future. Um, so um, I'm going to move on. So as everyone basically knows, Wikidata, it's kind of gone, it's had its huge growth spurt and, uh, and now like, a lot more emphasis is going towards quality rather than quantity. You know, we had loads and loads of volume of stuff in the early days, it was just better just to have data in, whether it was referenced or not, or, or any of these other details were a little bit, you know, less important. Uh, but just like with Wikipedia, where it reached a certain critical point where everyone started to say, hey, uh, it's all very well having stuff in there, but we want it to be, you know, recorded you know and linked to reputable sources and having good references um, so uh, and now because Wikidata is getting so big and so popular there's now a lot more interest from external organizations who would like to uh, you know who would like to import data into Wikidata for various reasons um, be it just for you know for the sort of social good of giving their open data to something really powerful uh, or to get more exposure for the data set that they have um, or indeed to sort of like make use of all the amazing tools that Wikidata already has linked to, linked to it, like the query service and visualizations that they maybe can't develop themselves uh, and really like to use. Um, so there's a huge opportunity uh, with, with importing data from institutions and my personal view is that uh, you know, as a community, if we've all agreed that, say, UNESCO is the source for world heritage data, you know, or one of the most important sources, uh, then we should sort of make an effort to stay synchronized with what UNESCO has in, in their data set. So, uh, you know, once everyone's decided, it shouldn't have to be redecided, you know, what's important, and we should just get on and say, look, let's set up a process where it keeps happening. Um, so, this is all really good news that people want to import data, but you know this weird little clip out guy is kind of what I and a few others look like when trying to figure out what to actually do. Um, it's really not easy, and unfortunately there's not like one, you can't sort of say this is how you do it, and that fits everything, because there's different data types, there's you know, some, some imports are going to involve databases that can be exported to spreadsheets. Other ones are going to need an API where you need a programmer to actually sort of uh, do it. Um, and other ones are much more simple and manual. So the data is there, but it needs manually bringing in. Uh, so there's no real one way to do it, and it's quite difficult and complicated um, to do. So the ideas that we were having when we were trying to import data is like, well, you know, often the expert in the subject isn't really the, the person who has all the skills to do the import. So, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a place where you could sort of like say, this is an import happening, and then you could draft in help from, uh, you know, experts and have a discussion about how it's supposed to be modeled and work out all the details and then really get a good community consensus in one place uh, and, then, and then begin your data import process and importantly have a place to sort of come back to when you need to synchronize and see what's already been done and you want to bring some more data in. So we really wanted this kind of Wikidata Import Hub and it was called the Data Import Hub originally. John, 
John Cummings decided to change it to we data set imports pages, which I'm never too fond of, but yeah, I might interchange a bit between the two, but it's the same concept. Um, and you know, the, the main thing is we've got to track it. It's got to be centralized. Otherwise, everyone gets confused and everyone gets lost and you can't really see what's happened. And it's really hard to come back to it next year when they, when they release some new data and figure out, oh, how do I get the, the new stuff in? What, what's missing? Um, so, and, and I, I'm going to talk a bit about the process we use, and I'm sure there's probably at least 10 people in this room who have used different tools that might be better for, to use in some situations. You know, you can't find out about everything. So, uh, uh, if at any point through, through the, the presentation before the questions, you feel like shouting out and saying, hey, you know, be aware of this tool, feel free to do that. <coughs> so, this is the reasons why we sort of created this data, data set imports area. Um, but, you know, it is just a first version. It's based around wiki pages, and I will, I will give you a demo in a minute. Um, but it, it's not user-friendly. It's much better than it could have, could have been if we hadn't sort of gone the extra mile with making it a little bit easier. Um, but, you know, it not, it's not used by everyone uh, who does, and a lot of that is because it's not user-friendly, even if they know it's there. And I must confess, I've got like about seven data imports I haven't yet imported, my, I haven't added the, the import hub for yet. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I should hopefully have that done by the end of Wikidatacon, uh, but I've got some of the demo anyway. Um, and also, having the place to put it is one thing, but, uh, but basically um, it doesn't mean that it's documented how you do it. You know, that is a much bigger job, and we've got some information in there. But I kind of visualize it a bit like a huge flow chart where it's like kind of like, okay, is it like this or like that? I mean, do they have unique identifiers? Yes or no? And these questions just keep on going on. Is it, is it an API? Is it a spreadsheet? You know, can it be, is it regular, you know, regularly, uh, you know, released and published? There's so many different directions you might have to navigate through. Uh, and that's one of the real challenges uh, to, to sort of filling in the documentation and Wikidata is missing a lot of documentation and I feel like this is one of the areas where it really is so I'll mention it again at the end but there's you know for people who are good at writing documentation and quite technical um, and uh, or good at bridging the gap between technical and non-technical uh, then it'd be really good to have your input and help sort of filling in the gaps um, so um, yeah I, let's now sort of demo uh, demo the uh, data set imports area. Um, by the way, I uploaded these slides uh, as a PDF to the, uh, to, to the, to the, um, the page on the program, just because I'm really bad with commons. Um, so there is actually a tiny URL for this, uh, for this as well, if you need it. But I think uh, feel free to just ping me or something afterwards, and I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you the details. So this is kind of your starting point, And uh, you can sort of see, um, you know, you basically have some very basic uh, instructions about what you have to do to begin. Um, and basically, you have to just click, click on the blue button when you're ready to import. But really, you know, before doing that, you really should be sort of checking what's already there and making sure that, um, making sure that someone else isn't already doing it, in which case you can just muck into the existing. Um, you notice here as well, hopefully that's all visible, um, you've got these sections, which is like, you know, why should we do it? And that's supposed to be a sort of a, you know, a call to action to external organizations to say what's so good about it, what, what advantages can we get? And you know, I, I'd kind of, you know, I can click around through here a little bit. It's one of the bits that, that, that is beginning to get filled up but could do with more, more information. Uh, but you can kind of see this is supposed to be trying to be something that sells the process to external organizations and says, hey, that's actually quite useful. You know, we could we could query it and make visualizations and we won't have to, um, we won't have to you know, spend the money to build these tools ourselves, which is pretty powerful. Um, and it's very impressive. A lot of external organizations are quite impressed when you show them pretty visualizations that you could kind of just generate out of the blue with such a small amount of Sparkle uh, query code. Um, and we've got, this is the one, <laughs> uh, learn how to import. This is the one that really needs a lot of work. We've got a bunch of steps here. Um, but I, mu I must say, you know, it's, it, it covers one process of typical data that you can get where you can normally get it into a spreadsheet. You normally have to do 
you know, there are, there are certain bits, like for example, matching the data to Wikidata. That's pretty much a universal step if you want to import anything. You've got to find out what's already there and what's not. Uh, so I'd really encourage people to sort of click through these, and especially if you are into writing stuff and filling out, fleshing out this area, it would be greatly appreciated. I mean, we'll keep on plugging away, making it better and better. Um, and then you've just got the other bits, uh, the bot, bot requests and ask a, ask a question, because obviously with some data imports, it's really not down to a non-technical person to do it. You just need to get you know a machine to do it, and someone needs to write a quick bot and uh, and do it. And for me, that is the future. I feel you know is okay. We know what the data where the data is. It's in a standard format. Let's write a bot. We've all agreed that this is a good, you know, and we get all the data coming in regularly with references to the source. And, you know, it also deals with the issue of, um, you know, what, when, when data changes over time, because one of the issues we had was it's really hard to sell it to an organization and say, this is definitely going to, you know, you can use this because they're going to say, well, what's going to happen in like, a few months when it's all changed and, you know, we found that what we imported from UNESCO, it did start trickling away from the model that we, we defined and other people had different ideas about how to model a World Heritage Site and all the rest of it. Um, so it's very linked in with modeling, uh, how you model it, and, you know, we have some advances in that area. Um, but uh, let's just get back to the data set imports thing. And I'm just going to, I won't actually do it, but let's, yeah. It's supposed to be both. So it's supposed to be that if you're just doing it yourself, ideally you should come here and say that you're doing it. But there is a, there is a help needed uh, category where that's intended for when someone doesn't know how to do it, but they know it's there. They can just add one and they can just select help needed instead of in progress. And that sort of just means that you could find it and experts hopefully could then find. I remember the previous iteration of this page just ended up being 30, 40 still requests who want to have data yeah. Nobody ever looked at it. Yeah, and nobody had a clue. You know, the people who were doing it saying, "Hey, there's some great data here, great data there," and actually, you know, not always. It wasn't always good data. It was just, a, you know, it was a bunch of really interesting data, but not necessarily good for Wikidata. It's gone a bit. It's a bit better than that now. But the truth is, it still needs a lot more use and traction. Um, I'll show you in a moment the the, the statistics of. Uh, you know, we've only got like. Of something like 11 complete and there's like 63 in the in the sort of in progress area and some of those really are in progress a lot of them are not really in progress they're just like what you were talking about where someone dumped it in and uh, didn't know how to put the help needed category on there uh, so you give it a name uh, it will complain if it's not a unique name because it ends up as a wiki page uh, you know as a sort of uh, just a slash on the end of the data set imports pages um, you can give it a source, and basically this is just the name, or should be pretty self-explanatory, and then a link to you know, the online page that talks about this data source, or something like that. Uh, you know, that's a bit flexible, but normally there will at least be some page for UNESCO, there is a World Heritage data set page you know, that you can link to. Uh, a little short description, um, and then when you get to next, uh, basically, uh, it's telling me I'm not logged in, which is not a problem for this. These are areas where we really need some import, some input, sorry, because uh, you know we've got these basic types, like is it in spreadsheet, is it a spreadsheet, is it just a web page that needs scraping, is it some PDF documents, text documents, or API or other. <laughs> Um, these are pretty, like, you know, these are kind of things we'll need on there, but there needs to be some community discussion about what, you know, how we would categorize this and what have you. Um, so there's a little bit of work to be done, but it kind of covers a lot. Quite a few will end up in other. Uh, even more input needed here, we've got uh, a bunch of data set topics, and the idea is to make some main, quite broad scale categories so you can roughly find your way around. You know, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, and I must stress, this entire area is not going to be perfect. It is not really, in my mind, it's nothing more than a prototype for what should be a tool. You know, it should be a tool. You should have a button and it should be tracked and you should be able to access them and read them. And, you know, um, using wiki pages is far from ideal, especially as, the, as wiki text is a nightmare to use. I mean, I know Wikipedians love it. Everyone sort of likes the fact they've learned it, but 
it is not good. You know, it is not a good way to, to deal with it. And especially when you need help from outside and you want to get experts who are not part of the community and you tell them to go and edit a wiki page to, to have a discussion, they're just like, sorry, no, you know, I'm not interested. So we tried to make it kind of quite visual editor friendly, the, the resulting pages, but you choose that. Crucially, you kind of have to choose, like, you know, the update frequency. Is this just a one-off or is it updated, you know, is it updated from time to time or does it come in additions uh, or, or, or do you not know because uh, you're just not really sure. Uh, when you click on create summary, that basically will lead you to a sort of a filled out page. And this is the previous one that I've done. Um, I've actually, like, once the page is created, there's like... Uh, this guideline section is in there just to make sure everyone's aware of you know what it's for but and how you use it but uh, you can also if you want to clean up the page after it's developed you know that's the idea it's a bit flexible you could say look I want to get rid of that make it a bit clearer because actually it's down here that you get the overview and these are some of the fields that you filled out in the in the form wizard form um, and uh, yeah, and just to kind of like a bit of a shout out to uh, the form form with extension because the only reason this is this is at all doable is because we got form wizard up and running, uh, which a you know was uh, you know the work of uh, um, Egg, Egg Bay uh, Eugene who's uh, who developed the tool, uh, but also a huge thanks to Chris Chris Schilling from uh, from the Wikimedia Foundation who actually helped us kind of activate it on Wikidata and helped train me how to use it and edit it. And you know that's something I've now showed other people how to do, and now it's more than just a few people who know how to use it uh, or set up the config. So you know, huge thanks to those guys, because it wouldn't have happened really without that. Um, so you've got my, my link, etc., my description. You get this progress of import thing. It, it gets pre-populated, um, but you, it's down to you to then fill in some stuff, and of course, this is fiddly. You've got these little templates for done. You know, if you want to make it look nice, if you don't know how to do it, you can just type done. You know, um, but the idea is uh, that you really should be editing this with Visual Editor. Um, so switch to the Visual Editor. Everything because tables are really particularly nasty to edit in Wikitext as well. I really recommend you just don't go there. Uh, and at least with this, I can sort of like, you know, I can click in a field and I can sort of edit it in a normal way. And it's, it's relatively okay even for newbies. Um, but you can see I've kind of, uh, this is a relatively complete one. I haven't sort of done that last step, which I think would be nice. And not every data import is gonna need all these steps. Let's, let, they might be editing, and the idea is you just modify it to purpose if it was an API style edit or whatever. A uh, lot, lot of kind of flexibility in it. Um, and I'll just get out of editing for a moment. But you can see here for the edit history section, this is what I've, uh, I'll stay in editing for a moment because this is just, these are the, the, the tracked list of imports and I've done a little summary of, you know, what, what was added and how many statements were added, how many were removed. And I've got a little link at the end. You know, I said the method was quick statements. Yeah, presumably most of you are familiar with it, but this is one of the go-to tools for importing data, especially when it's coming from a spreadsheet style format. Um, so I put a little link and that sort of gets me off to, that gets me to go, up. well, now I'm in, I'm in an edit mode, that will get me to the source sheet that I used. But because it's Visual Editor, you know, you can sort of uh, do nice things here and you should be able to sort of like, look, yeah, insert below, for example, like that, and I've got myself a new row. You know, I can copy and paste cells. It's, it's much easier than messing around with anything else. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to cancel that. Um, let's just delete this one. And um, actually, how do I just escape the discarded it? It's, it's fine. So um, just to take you down to the last part of this, uh, we've, we've got a discussion area gets added automatically, you know, with a few suggested headings. And then the idea is, yeah, discuss it as much as you can before you start actually throwing loads of data in because you'll find out other people don't agree with it being there in Wikidata at all or there's something wrong with your model. Uh, and this is where I've, you know, we, we put a structure as one of the suggested headings. Um, now that Wikidata is starting to develop this, this uh, you know, shape expressions for modeling the, uh, the actual, you know, in a more technical way, what items should look like, that's ideally where you would want to put one of these in. You know, unfortunately, most people don't know how to do that yet. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a matter of finding an expert who does or just biting the bullet and learning it uh, or, or what have you. But this is at least where you could say, you know, look, I would need some help doing that. Um, 
And of course, for simple stuff like this, that's probably okay, because it's saying, look, this is what I'm using. Uh, I'm just using this qualifier, that qualifier, that qualifier, and these are my main properties. And uh, you know, when, you're, when, you're, when you are doing this, uh, you know, I'm using the property templates, uh, you know, which normally you can sort of see an example when you land and you could kind of repurpose it. You just have to add the P number or the Q number and you'll, you'll get all the labels coming up. Um, so uh, this is sort of like some, did some discussion about just things that might be, people might want to know. Um, yeah, so, you know, some, some limitations on it. And then the visualizations, which is something that for every data set, you then want to sort of showcase it. And uh, the visualizations are really cool. And so you kind of have, uh, you know, like, uh, let's see for this particular one. Uh, yeah, like, uh, let's have a look. Uh, line chart for countries, the whole planet. Uh, any, any of these are pretty interesting. But yeah, I, I, won't, I won't bother showing off the queries, but they're all pretty, quite pretty. And uh, on one another one, I also embedded, you know, embedded a map straight in with a heat map. It's kind of like, yeah, I think just do what you want to do here to make it as, uh, as cool as possible. This maintenance bit needs filling out. And the idea is there, I should have had some queries that are telling me, hey, uh, some of these are missing or some of these, you know, find, and checking that everything's got the right structure. Um, with the shape expressions work, that might change completely into just, hey, click quickly run this and give me a report on how many of the items have everything they should do and how many have got wrong things and how many are just missing some data. So really that is going to be, you know, that should become tightly integrated. Um, and so at the bottom here, you can see the categories that got added. Um, so this was just because of the selections I made in the form. Um, except this one, complete data sets, because uh, this basically is, um, is something that I changed it to, and I added that category once it was complete, which is quite unuser friendly. Uh, but equally, if you wanted to, you could, uh, you know, sort of like, I'm actually, because I'm not logged in, I don't have my hot category <coughs> extension and stuff like that. But the, when, when you do edit the page, um, you can, in fact, does Visual Editor work with categories? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, no, sorry, Add it. visual editor. Excuse my slowness, I've never learned how to use touchpads. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, no, that doesn't come up there. So I, 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 norm I, I have the Hotcat uh, extension installed, you know, which is a, ga you know, a gadget you can ac access in your user area, and it's just really super handy because you get a little plus button and you can sort of modify categories really easily. Um, but basically, that kind of gives you an overview of a, an example page. Um, and if I just go back uh, to the main area now, um, let's have a little look. So if I scroll down a bit, sorry, I was meaning to be on the main home page. If you scroll down a bit here, uh, you actually get, these are the sort of main links that why we wanted these categories to sort of be able to at least see what's going on. And here you can see 63 supposedly in progress. You know, I would probably guess about 20 of those maybe are actually in progress. Uh, help needed nothing at all, which is probably like the 40 odd that aren't being done, were, but they didn't know how to put the help needed category on it. Um, so yeah, like, like these are some of the things that are still really not easy to deal with. Um, but at least with a few other people overseeing it, they could deal with that. And here you've got all the categories that we have chosen and I'll bet you any money that there's at least two categories that should be there that are not, you know, because it's quite a lot. You'll have to put it in unknown or other. Uh, but what you've got here is little links on each one. Um, and so that is actually linking you. It doesn't show the numbers, but it's linking you to the, the, the different categories for each one, basically. So if I wanted to say um, what were the complete education ones, I could click on that. And I'm now, um, oh, actually that didn't do, yeah, sorry, it does. So there we go. This is, it links to a search. That's a clip. It's not actually giving you the category, but it's showing you all the results that are. Um, but if I just go back here a second, you can also just click on one of these main categories. So if I just click on education, I'll actually get to the category itself. Uh, and you see here are the education ones. Um, and if I go back out, data sets by topic, you can see um, we've got uh, a few data input categories. So getting up to the root, 
this is where, you know, if you're just into looking at the categories, you could browse around, and that's data sets by progress, by format, by topic, and by update type, you know, as in, is it periodical or is it a, a one-off static thing? Um, so, mm, let's have a look. I'm just going back here for a sec. So that kind of is hopefully, and, and you can see the idea behind this is really nice uh, in that you can sort of like, you know, you can root out the ones. And if you are really technical, you might want to look at the help needed API style data sets because you know that you can do that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's just about people finding what they can help with and other people reporting what they need help with really um, is the main advantage. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it's only sort of, it only gives you that confidence that you're not repeating work if everyone's using it and you feel a bit more secure that it's there. And we're not there yet because uh, most people probably don't yet. Uh, so hopefully if you know anyone who does do a lot of imports, it'd be really nice if you can encourage them to sort of put that tiny bit of extra effort in or quite a lot of extra effort to get one of these pages up and running. Um, and uh, last thing I thought it'd be nice to show there. Um, yeah, a little point about these... Uh, uh, about these different update types, uh, and uh, an important thing I forgot to mention from the dataset page itself, which I'll just go back out of editing mode, uh, read. Um, yeah, so one of these, one of these that has to get filled out afterwards um, normally uh, is, now where is it? That's interesting. There we go. In the progress, the first field here is the Wikidata item for the data set. So it's another little thing you have to do, but it's really, really advantageous because if I click on that now, I can see that I've got this item for that particular data set where I can now record some statements about it and say what the publisher is, what the URL is, uh, and, and crucially, we've got this, um, this property which links you back to the data import page. And in theory, this allows you to query for data sets, you know, and query for a list of data import pages that are, say, from UNESCO or a list of data import pages that, um, you know, that, that have any other complicated relation because of the Sparkle query magic. You can do what you like. Um, but uh, it's a bit difficult at the moment. You can't really use the query service easily to access the categories that we put on the pages. So what's a bit tricky now is to do a really cool query for data sets, but then filter it by, you know, the, the in progress or the help needed category, which is something that's kind of needed. Um, and in fact, I think you probably could do it. Has anyone used the API uh, query service? The, there's a way of using the Wikimedia API in the query service. So I'm guessing, I meant to experiment with that, but I'm guessing that might be just about possible now. Um, the real dream is that you could sort of have a big list of stuff, you know, that you could have a query on a project page saying, here's all the data imports that we want to keep track of and we should be interested in. And that's kind of like queries are clearly the way to do that. Um, so um, I'm just going to go back, I think, to the slides for a moment. Um, and I think... Um, yeah, I'm not going to sort of flog this too heavily. I, I just want to go through, uh, I mean, really, really, to be honest, that kind of covers most of what I wanted to show you because uh, it's really about showing you what's there, where the shortcomings are, and to kind of uh, hopefully inspire everyone to say, look, we do need this area really well sorted. It's something we have to get right if we're going to manage the constant inflow of data. And I think... Um, you know, if people are, if there are tool writers in the room, you know, or no people who are tool writers, really it needs someone. I mean, if Magnus was in the room, he probably would have finished it already by the end of the talk. But we need a, we need an import uh, hub equivalent that is a tool. I, I'm absolutely sure of that. And in the future, hopefully we'll have one. Because uh, you just can't expect everyone to sort of have to fiddle around so much with pages and adding categories and all this stuff. It's like, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Something like, you know, how Open Refine makes it easy to sort of work with the processing of your data, you know, and uh, mix and match makes it easier to work with matching your catalogs. It, you know, in a way, I feel it should all be tied together through one big tool that's like, okay, great, that, that's the data set. Um, so, yeah, so basically, um, you know, the call to action really um, is, you know, if you do have data that you want to import or are importing, you know, please do try and create uh, an entry for it. And, uh, you know, and report any problems or issues that you had or particular gripes. 
Um, and if you do know of data that you, you know, that you don't know how to import, but it's really, really good, please do still try and add it and try and get it once it's published into the help needed category, which basically means taking off the in progress category and putting on the help needed category. So, uh, um, yeah, if anyone wants any specific instructions, please do uh, ask. Um, and of course, really, uh, we're happy to help, you know, so if someone just has it, just please feel free to get in contact with us directly and we'll set up the page for you and, you know, maybe try and do the import as well. Um, so, uh, you know, and really, I'd love to see Wikidata growing as a, you know, um, this hub for external data sources and it's already so brilliant with external identifiers. And it, the, the infrastructure is there for us to really start to automate more and end up with a sort of, uh, for me, the ultimate future Wikidata is just like, yeah, we've made our decisions about loads of different data sets and then it just flows in. You know, we eventually get bots setting everything up and there are a few really notable things that, we, that are coming, like signed statements is one of the things that some of you might have heard of. Uh, but it'd be the ability to put some kind of stamp of approval on a statement to say, you know, this is UNESCO approved or something like that um, to potentially stop people from just coming on and saying, you know, oh, I don't like it like that. After you've done the import and changing it, they would think twice because they would say, hey, this is signed. This is actually not something you should just mess with arbitrarily. Um, a lot of work to be done, and in fact, I haven't looked at the latest, but signed statements, I think a lot of people have different ideas about, about what it needs to do, but that's the basic principle, a stamp of approval, which I, I, I thoroughly approve of that myself. Uh, so, um, yeah, so hopefully, with all of our kind of input, we can evolve this into what it really should be, something that's not so hard to use, something that actually helps you track and that you could really use to find out what's going on, uh, what is actually going in and out of what into Wikidata. Um, and uh, you could feel confident that by looking at this place, typing a quick search, you would know that this is some new work that I can do, you know. Um, so that's what we need to get it to, but it does involve people using it uh, as much as possible, even if it's a bit ropey in places. You know, we need to use the best thing that we've got for now, which is that for the moment. So. Uh, um, yeah, so look, well, thank you for, uh, for, for listening, and please, uh, I'm happy to take any questions, and generally, please do just come and talk to me, to, you know, reach out to me, John, or Sean, or, or anyone, and uh, just kind of give your feedback, input about, about it, and, uh, you know, and hopefully we'll be able to sort of help people, you know, integrate their, their, their imports into the area, and give a bit of advice, and use your feedback to just make it better. Uh, so, yeah, um, that's really it. That's everything I want to cover. I know it's going to be a bit early, but if anyone's got any questions, yeah. Um, thank you, first of all, for your. Um... Oh, sorry. Is the microphone? Oh, is there a microphone here? I don't see it. It's behind you. It's behind you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we still have, like, So we still have 20 minutes for questions and answers. Okay, so you can use the time for questioning. Fantastic. You know? And remember to wait for the mic, please. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. I'm Danielle from the Netherlands, uh, and I'm involved with a lot of donations from GLAM institutions. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your uh, interesting uh, presentation. I'd never, um, I, I didn't know this was existing. I suspected that would be the case <laughs> for a lot of people, yeah. yeah. And one of the main first questions I have is there's those two categories like in progress and help needed yeah it sounds a bit like they're like mutually exclusive uh, uh, they shouldn't like, be I there, there's like help needed hopefully in the process yeah, I, I, yeah. I myself would not, hardly ever be at the beginning where with the scraping for example yeah but I, I do a lot of data cleaning and data quality uh, well improvement with mm. for example the shape expressions um, and when I saw the table that you showed the um, that actions again. that have been undertaken. Um, let's go back here. Sorry, uh, here. So if you go to like an in progress. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thing. That's actually just the category itself, but yeah. Then there wasn't really like a, a name or a person attached to like. I, I would be afraid if I would use it now that if I start something I put in progress that I'm sort of the one who would. You know, be the 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 manager of the whole yeah, update, yeah. where it would be 
for me, helpful to be able to find where help is needed in yeah. sort of like a, a subtask like data cleaning or um, yeah. I don't know if you, if you knew. Yeah, I see what you mean. And on the actual page itself, uh, just go back here uh, for a second, like... Uh, um, like there, the progress, oh well, that's yes. the actual import, but the edit history, for example. Yeah. Like, um, like actually having uh, the person who did it on this table would be really good, wouldn't it? For a yeah, start. and then I could say, oh, well, shall I do this part? Or yeah, yeah. if I can help there? Yeah. Or That's really, really good point. I mean, this is exactly the sort of stuff that, you know, you just, it's quite obvious when you say it, that actually it should be like that. Uh, I think we kind of like, obviously you've got the sort of um, edit history of the page will sort of tell you some usernames, but that's not really the, the idea. So having... Having the person who imported the user that imported it here would be really, really good. And I think what you were saying there about having the in progress and help needed not being mutually exclusive is quite important. So I think a little bit of a restructuring required there to uh, to sort of say, well, it's in progress, but we also need some help. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. like if it's in progress, that's cool, but that sounds like it's being dealt with. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And there's uh, yeah. my help is not needed. Or, yeah, I know what you mean. I yeah. completely understand that. I think it's a really, really, really good bit of feedback and important for us to to fix. Quite easy for us to fix as well. So yeah, yeah, we can do that. No problem. That's uh, any other questions? Um, I didn't understood uh, this, the QID corresponding to the data set. Is it automatically generated? <coughs> no, that's, it, should, it sort of should be, uh, but it's not. And actually, it's one of the really, really fiddly bits. When you first arrive here, it actually just has like a, a red link there with some question marks. And really, it's, when you edit it, you can see that you can sort of edit the question marks and put in a Q number, but you have to create it yourself, <laughs> which is very unuser friendly. It's in the instructions for like what the steps of it, of, of, you know, if you go to the first page, it does say, you know, make your page, make an item for the data set, uh, you know, add the basic statements to it. But this is, a, this is quite a bit of work for you to have to do. Because, um, I mean, the cool thing is that you really are collecting a collection of data sets. Mm. And, uh, and I mean, okay, you want to try to import them in Wikidata, but maybe uh, it takes a lot of time, or maybe it never happens because there is not uh, the people that work it. Mm. But still, to have this de data in Wikidata to search for a data set, saying I'm searching a data set about a specific topic. Yeah. And so, because you are filling already some metadata in this form, like uh, who is the publisher, when the da data yeah. type, and maybe also some text that could be taken from Wikidata. It's about cultural heritage, museums, or Germany yeah, locations. Yeah. And if you then fill this, then you already give a lot of contribution, even if then you do not achieve to import the data set yeah, itself. Yeah, you've at least created a tracking environment with a lot of yeah. useful data. Uh, and would you like, I mean, would you like that? Because that could happen from two sides. It could happen from the Wikidata side, that you sort of make, a, you make an item for the data set, and then you could generate an import page from it. Uh, or, or vice versa, that from here, would you like to be able to automatically generate from the data that's been in, input in the form could, to convert that into, uh, into an actual Wikidata item populated with statements? Excellent. Yeah, um, I was thinking this, uh, this yeah, way. But. Yeah, I, I think that sounds great to me. Uh, like I, I'd like that to be, and I, I guess if at that stage it should then be automated that when you click on create the import, actually that just happens. Uh, so that's a really nice little job. It should be quite a fun job for someone who knows how to do it. I, I'm into coding, but I haven't done any bot writing on, uh, you know, on Wikimedia projects, but you know, I think I'm going to bite the bullet soon and just, just have a go. And that's a great suggestion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's one of the things I kind of brushed over just because it's so, it's just like, you know, this is awkward, you know, you have to do it. You have to go out of the environment, sorry. And, uh, and once you're out of the environment, you then have to go and do all this Wikidata editing. And it's like a typical story in Wikidata that, oh, to do this, you have to learn to do that. And so learn to do that, you've got to do that. And then just learn this and do a computer science degree and then do that and the other. And eventually you kind of all the bits come together. Uh, that's a really great suggestion. Definitely, that's something that we'll, we'll make sure comes in pretty soon. Um, yeah, any other questions or suggestions? So far, two really good ones, yeah. Hello, I'm Hakan from Turkish Wikimedia User Group. I would like, also like to add that suggestion that uh, creation of property pro proposal mm. uh, should be somewhat included uh, as a instruction in the process yeah 
Also, I have looked, when I see that there is no uh, item in the help needed category, I see that uh, this is somewhat a uh, issue about uh, exposure of this centralization. Yeah. And uh, I see I'm a data importer. I import a lot of data. People are asking about things I am not expert on, but I see that every day there are external identifier properties created and most of them are empty for months and yeah, there was yeah. some time in last year I think there was a round of uh, bot work mm -hmm. on those identifiers but now it wasn't repeated. Maybe you could have a place in this where uh, there are links to newly created properties so that the people can yeah, help import the process. I, I, that's a really, really nice idea because actually the properties themselves indicate an import needing to be done. Uh, the fact that you've got a new identifier that's empty and not being used should then indicate that there is a necessary help needed on a data set import. That's some really, that's really, really cool and cool suggestions. Uh, yeah, um, I'll actually, uh, I'm because these are really, really good to hear these. This is really important. Like it's the, one of the first chances to hear feedback from a bunch of people. So I'll put these all in the talk page as well after. Yeah. Uh, quick question. I, I think you, you didn't show what I thought was the most interesting things. If you click on quick statements import sheet. Yes. It's a whole set of Google spreadsheets that are the working area, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, and that's a really good point because I was in <laughs> editing mode at the time. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is linking straight to the sheet that, that was used. Uh, literally, you could copy and paste, you know, from, from this area here. Uh, and the whole spreadsheet, and then you could paste that into quick statements, and that would be you know, effectively a repeat of the job. But more importantly, you can see exactly what was done, you know, and if there was a mistake, you could go and find out. And um, actually, quick statements, when I did these ones, quick statements now lets you sort of um, tag your, your imports with, uh, you know, with IDs so that they could be reversed as well uh, en masse quite easily. So that's what I would be wanting to put right at the top of this import sheet would be... Uh, would be, you know, this is the this is the exact sort of, uh, you know, identifier for for, the, for this data set import. So for the quick statements import, so that you could easily revert it if something goes wrong, uh, and um, and generally just track and find out what's happened. So, so in this case, maybe you, you mentioned before, if you go back to the wiki page, yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Would there be? So who would have done all the spreadsheet work? Would it was was it someone who request it, and then a volunteer would come by and grab all the stuff and then start processing this in a spreadsheet for the folks who submitted it? Yeah, I'm um, basically, I, I'm kind of, we kind of envision it as both. Like in this case, it was just me doing it and then writing it all down so someone else could see what I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, uh, one of the much more important reasons for doing this was it was indeed for that where someone just doesn't know how to do it and then someone else can come along and say, look, here's the, here's the quick statements import sheet. <coughs> I think collaboration, uh, of different people with different skills around a central place is one of the real huge wins of having a centralized spot, you know, that right. you can talk about it rather than have someone from Project Chat, some other guy sent an right. email and someone else sent that and you can't really find out what the story is. Yeah, I, I think was. it's great that you can document like the whole thinking process from beginning to yeah, end on this yeah. page. If you scroll down where it says structure of data within Wikidata, yeah. so this is an effect, uh, no, scroll up a little oh, bit. Up a bit. So sorry. this table right here, which is, you know, says, structure of data within Wikidata. This is basically your crosswalk database, right? It's yeah. kind of showing you mapping of the database you have to yeah. what is in Wikidata, right? Exactly. But it doesn't really use this directly, right? You kind of coded it into the formulas of the spreadsheet up there, is that what it uh, is? So, well, basically it's, it's, it's actually kind of, these should be sort of relating to the column headings of the, right. of the original spreadsheet. But if I go here, like I normally have a way I do it when I've got spreadsheet data, and of course everyone's gonna got their own way. Right. Hopefully the, the, the quick statement sheet should end up kind of the same, you know, for everyone, but I normally have a sort of like, uh, you know, mm. This is actually before we got the data hit. This is what I was doing before we had the hub up and running was to try and sort of track what was going on and what date things happened. Um, and, uh, but yeah, ba ba basically um, if you, in fact, let me just find, that's the raw data. So, oh no, it isn't the raw data, sorry. This is a bit of a messy one actually. It's been quite Maybe a while. Maybe that one is. So this is, yeah, this is gonna be, sorry, that was it for both sexes. There we go, that was the one I was actually right. doing. The other ones were to be done. Uh, so really, these column headings, each one maps to a property, doesn't it, really? And, right. and, and what actually would be the most sensible way for me to have done that is to exactly match uh, those, those headings, sorry, wrong way, uh, to these. And right. I think I've got like year of statistic, whereas actually in here, that's 
that's down as dates. Right. Because you know? I'm wondering that that's something that could be kind of interesting. If you go back to the wiki page, yeah. If you actually treat this table in this wiki page as a as a real as mapping. a real crosswalk database that you can encode, pull down, find the mapping exactly from your field name to the exact Q number yeah. or P number in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's then really interesting. That simpl simplifies a lot. Of, not to say simplifies, but it automates a lot of stuff. Yeah, I really like that. Um, yeah. And I guess the only question would be, because uh, actually for this kind of thing, it would work quite the, the table. If we if you did map it correctly, uh, it could be automated straight from a table. Right. I wonder whether as well, obviously, like with shape expressions, like maybe it's also that we could be sort of automating it, uh, you know, automate it using some shape expression stuff as well. But uh, I think... Um, Having that mapping, really, it's the it's the instruction to a bot or any other automated process of exactly right. what you do. And I guess the only challenge then is to keep it up to date. You know, if because right. uh, of course we also have to deal with messy external data where they said, oh no, this year we changed the name of that column, or you know, we've changed our ID format or something like that, which right. unfortunately happens in the real world. You know. Uh, um, but yeah, that's a really nifty idea, uh, and I think that's something that would be nice to play around with because I don't think that's very difficult to set up. At no, least, it's not. Uh, especially yeah. then if you could point the, on your bot request, you could say, look, I'm requesting a bot to do this. Here's the mapping, uh, and, and I guarantee you it's exactly correct for the, for the, for the published yeah. CSV file or whatever it is. That's really cool. Well, let's yeah. talk afterwards because I, I have some code that does that. Really? So that can... If you're from the spreadsheet, you grab the table and the wiki page, bring Fantastic. it back, and it should be able to generate the quick statements right away. That's in what the we like to hear. So. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. I knew this was worth it. Cool. <laughs> it's great. Thanks. Cheers. Um, Any more questions? We still have like eight what, minutes. What, uh, just one over there on the right. I think. I'm gonna be. Yeah, that sounds really cool. That's honestly like the sort of stuff. Automation is what I really want to get towards. That's uh, what we were all. Hello, doing. everybody. It's Mohammed Hijal from Palestine. Uh, I'm a beginner in the data importing field, and I just want to know, as a beginner and best in your opinion, which is easier to to learn this, to open this page and follow steps, or to learn open refine. Uh, it's a good question, and ultimately, what I would like to see is that if you are using OpenRefine, you still make this page because where I, where I've sort of uh, I've put uh, method quick statements here. Arguably, if you're using OpenRefine, you're kind of using quick statements as well. But it would be nice to see that actually the method was 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 OpenRefine, and the links that are there would well. OpenRefine, I'm not an expert in it, and I, I understand it's not online. You're doing it locally, is that correct? So that's a, real, that's a real shame, because uh, I would love to be able to say then you would link to that. But I think because of that, if you're using OpenRefine, you would still have to, the, the best thing you could do here is link to um, you know, a copy of the, the generated quick statements rows. But the ideal scenario is whether you're using OpenRefine or some other tool or some manual work, that it should have an entry so that people can still find it. Um, and uh, and that it's just documented here how you did it, you know. And I think, um, you know, if you don't feel like it fits into the structure, you know, I think the idea would be you could put some text in to say, hey, it's quick statements, but a big note there to say, I did this with OpenRefine. And hopefully in future iterations of OpenRefine, we could have links straight to the OpenRefine sheets because I have to say, you know, it, from what I do know about it, I feel like it's kind of the... It's the future in terms of us messing with spreadsheets. You know, much better to be using a real tool for it that, that does quite a lot of tracking for you. Uh, two more questions. Well, no, it wasn't a question. It was extra to what you said about Open Refine. You can export the Open Refine uh, project. Oh. So you can just. Uh, if you put that somewhere. And what format? Does it come to a, CF, a CSV or something like it's that? It's like a tar file. And then it can be imported in somebody else's. Uh, right. And, and can you can you, uh, can you you upload tar files to Commons? I was just wondering how you would link no, that. No, you open, then you open up the project again in your own local uh, OpenRefine <coughs> uh, installation. I see, I see. Well, so you, you can yeah. send it to someone. No. I, I was just wondering if there was a way that we could get that onto the page, you know, because really it's something, but it feels like that's not a quite straightforward thing. No, really. you'll have to put it somewhere, mm, say, for yeah, example, yeah, in Google. Yeah, yeah, Maybe a commons data, commons data, ta data table or something like that would be quite yeah. cool. Open, refine to commons data table and back again. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really good to know, and I, I will certainly uh, appreciate knowing that for when I start messing around with it. So it's something, and maybe you could also, another option might be to put a Google Drive link or something like that. 
you could put the file in Google Drive and then put a link there to to the file, which is really good to know. You could you could you know emulate online. That's really cool. Hi. Hi. I'm with the German Digital Library, also involved in Europeana, and for us, it's a little bit, yeah, it's it's a bit, uh, yeah, scaling it down a little bit, um, um, going back to these kind of of CSV tables, uh, because we actually have uh, these kind of structured data, the mappings, and uh, Jakob Foss's Cocoda tool and something, and I I would really like to be part of of of, of, of a a joint development where we where we use the what's already there on that side and Europeana or us uh, we represent hundreds or thousands of, of cultural heritage institutions and this would be very easy to to act as a data import hub and so that yeah. is I mean that is a magic suggestion and I would love to talk more about that because yeah, it's, it's I was very happy following Andrew what Andrew did and made a lot of mental notes. <laughs> we never came around to, to, to I talked to Sandra two mm. years ago, but I really think it's happening right now. And Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's a really, really, really music to my ears because the idea is that people have done this work already and there are people who really understand uh, processes and data and messy data. Like, you know, this is your real expertise in how you deal with this, how you deal with real world data and how you track it. Uh, I would love to have that conversation. I'd love to see what we can reuse and make sure everyone's not re repeating the same work. And another important thing, you mentioned Sandra here, is that uh, we've done this for Wikidata, but of course for structured data on commons, having this exact same sort of area, and there's no reason to have different ones, I don't think. Uh, we should be at least having an option to say this is structured data on commons, or you know, it might have to be put on, on commons, but it should be the exact same process. And if there are some tools and processes that we set up, they should be there for both, and I think it's going to become really important with structured data on commons as well. So yeah, I would love to talk further about that. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Mm. So um, it's more of a thought than a question as such, but with OpenRefine, it's possible to run it on a server and interact by API. So. Do you oh, think it would be right? possible to set up a server and then work towards doing some automation of importing? In, and would, would that have to be like, you know, what, like could one server manage mo, me, mo, loads of them, basically? Uh, could we, could so, we have yeah, one server for the, when, for the import When hub? you use it locally, it's just, um, basically using a browser like a server. Oh, so it just does a kind of local host style thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. So that really is pretty. That is a cool idea as well because uh, that's kind of beyond my expertise. Whether we could set up a server, but you, you're at least expert enough to know it's possible, which is which is. You good. know, it started as Google Refine, right? It was a web-based service. Oh, they open sourced it. Oh, of course, it, of course. And because it was web-based, it just changed it to a local thing. So it is literally. I mean, so why? So why hasn't it become more web-based? I wonder. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so just all you need to do is deploy it to a, deploy it to a public server, basically. I mean, what about deploying to Heroku or some simple like deployment it's, like that? It must be quite straightforward. It's, it's actually uh, the, the problem is that it's um, uh, really resource consuming. So that's why it's uh, ah okay. So it actually would be potentially quite expensive to plus when Google released it as uh, as OpenRefine. They dropped the authentication part, so it will need to be re-added again. Um, okay, right, right. That explains a lot. That explains a lot. Um, but I, but I do I do feel like this is uh, exactly the kind of area you want to look at because I think more people should be using OpenRefine for the process because it helps do a lot of the tracking for you anyway, and it helps you repeat when things have changed and like where new data becomes available. So I love the idea of pulling all these pieces together finding out which bits overlap with other bits and which would be the best of the, all the solutions and then just pulling it all together and, and trying to use this as like a kind of test case for it uh, and then have a go at using it on commons as well. Uh, that sounds like really, with all the brains in this room, I think it's kind of like, you know, we're feeling out a much better solution. Uh, so yeah, um, I think is that about time? Yeah. Okay, so we are out of time right now, so thank you so much for the discussion. I'm sure that Novino will be present here for answering questions and keeping up with this discussion. So thank you very much, and I want to uh, round of applause for Novino. Thanks.
And yeah, really, thanks a lot for the amazing suggestions. And uh, this is all like gold, and it's all going to go into the process, and it's going to turn into some real tangible stuff. So looking forward to letting everyone know what, what comes out of it. Yeah.